Hi friends, in one of the previous videos, we saw that the two most important things required to build an AI agent are LLMs and tools. The LLMs are becoming more powerful with their reasoning capabilities. And as a developer who leverages LLMs to build applications, we don't do much on the LLM side. Our real work is building the right tools and giving them to the agents to solve the problems. Okay, so today we will see how to build a tool within Hugging Face Small Agents Framework. Okay, now we will use RAG just as a use case, but our focus is going to be on how to build the uh, tool. All right, now as we are taking RAG as a use case, we need a knowledge base, uh, right? So for that, uh, we are simply uh, downloading this Hugging Face Documents data set and doing a bit of uh, processing of the data, splitting them into smaller chunks. And here we have uh, all the Hugging Face docs as small chunks, okay? Now, if anything is not clear uh, uh, within this code, uh, do let me know. But all we are doing is simply downloading a data set uh, which is Hugging Face documents from the Hugging Face and uh, uh, just doing a bit of processing and then splitting them into smaller chunks. So our docs processed uh, has uh, all the documents. All right, now before we build the tool, uh, a couple of concepts. Now with the embeddings easily becoming available, uh, now there is a lot of focus on semantic search, but before that we used to have this lexical or the keyword search, okay? Uh, uh, that used to power all our search engines, including uh, Google. Uh, TF-IDF, term frequency and inverse document frequency, this used to be one of the uh, uh, one of the most used uh, lexical search. So the way it works is, it has these two concepts, term frequency and inverse document frequency. So the TF, it simply counts how many times the query term appeared in a document, right? So the more times it occurred, the more important the document is. Now the IDF, it gives more weightage to the rare words. So what it does is, okay, out of these end documents, how many documents actually contain the query, uh, query term, okay? So we use this TF IDF, to find out which documents are relevant to the query. One major issue with this TF-IDF is it treats this term frequency linearly. What I mean by that is, let's say we have two documents with similar length. Now document one has the query term appeared 200 times, whereas document two has the same query term appeared 100 times. So the TF-IDF says the document one is twice as important as document two because it has that word 200 times as opposed to 100 times in document uh, two. But that's not really correct, right? There is a big difference between uh, uh, a document not having the search term versus one time, two times, three times, etc. But after a certain number of times, it doesn't add much value. So whether a document contain the search query 100 times or 200 times has little impact as opposed to another document which does not have the doc term at all, another document which has, let's say, only five times, okay? That's one major issue uh, with a TF-IDF. And the second issue is, when we normalize using the document length, we simply take the document, uh, the number of words in the document, and when we compute TF, we simply divide with uh, uh, the number of words. So it's a very basic uh, uh, normalization. Now, BM25, this is actually the king of uh, lexical search. A BM means a best match and this 25, that's just the iteration uh, number. It's like the Python package version uh, type number. So the 25 uh, does not have any significance here. Now, it address the shortcomings of TF IDF uh, with two concepts. The first one is called term frequency saturation. So as we just discussed, after a certain number of uh, times a search query has appeared, it does not count them uh, linearly, okay? Uh, so this additional occurrences have uh, diminishing returns. Now, as opposed to TF-IDF, which has a simple mathematical formula, uh, BM25, it has a super complex math formula, uh, but uh, we don't need to worry about that formula. Uh, the two concepts are, one, after a certain number of times, uh, the returns from the repetition of the search query term uh, diminishes, okay? Uh, and the second one, the document length normalization uh, as opposed to simply dividing uh, uh, in the case of TF-IDF, it does it in a more sophisticated way using these two tunable parameters. The first one is related to the frequency saturation and the second one uh, is uh, how to some sort of this penalizing uh, parameter. Uh, okay, so BM25, 
uh, even today it's currently the best lexical or the keyword uh, search engine and uh, given a bunch of documents and a query bm25 rank the given documents uh, uh, in the order of uh, the best match okay all right a couple of more concepts uh, before we get to the uh, tool now in a vanilla rag system we perform the retrieval only once so we have the query we have the knowledge base in the form of this vector store and we compute the embeddings for the query and we simply uh, do the retrieval only once now whether the retrieved documents are really relevant or adequate uh, to answer the query or not we go ahead and we augment the context to do the generation okay and the second thing is our knowledge base is typically in this affirmative voice right whereas the user asks the query in this question format right so when we compute the semantic similarity between two things where one is in the form of a question and the second is in the form of this affirmative voice the semantic similarity score might not be as high as it should be if the document is relevant okay maybe some other documents which are in this question format even though they are not as relevant as the other documents might get scored high uh, uh, when we do the semantic similarity so these are the two shortcomings of this vanilla rack now in an agentic rack what we can do is to address the second issue we can reformulate the query to be in this affirmative voice okay that's super easy so we tell the agent hey before you go and do the semantic search take the query and rewrite it or reformulate it in uh, this affirmative voice okay that's one thing and the second thing because the agent has this autonomous uh, power if it thinks it does not have enough context to answer the user query adequately it can go back and search one more time okay so it has that uh, flexibility all right so we are going to add both the functionality to our tool okay all right as i mentioned we will be using a small agent framework for building the agents so import this tools class and then for the retriever uh, from langchain simply import this bm25 uh, retriever okay now here is the thing so this is how we build tools for small agents all right so define a class so it's a retriever tool now at the very basic it will have a couple of things uh, a name description input output and then uh, this forward function which is the most important one so every time the agent invoke the tool this forward function uh, gets executed okay all right so we give it a name we give it some description uh, what the tool does which is very important uh, when the agent uh, has multiple tools and it figure out uh, which tool to select uh, it uses this description so the description is very important and the input it takes this user query now here we say the query should be semantically uh, sorry this is the query to perform and the query should be semantically close to target documents okay and use the affirmative form rather than a question so with this simple instruction we are telling the agent when it's using this tool to reformulate uh, the user query from the question format to this affirmative voice okay that's very very important we will see example of uh, a user query and how it's uh, reformulated all right uh, the output type it's simply string now this init method it gets uh, invoked uh, when we instantiate uh, uh, in when we instantiate uh, uh, the class um, so here we simply take this bm25 retriever and supply uh, the knowledge base okay this is our knowledge base uh, these, these are already uh, the documents uh, which are uh, split into chunks now here we are saying uh, we want to retrieve the top 10 uh, most relevant documents now notice as i mentioned this is not a vector similarity search we don't uh, have uh, a vector store or an embedding model etc we are doing at this lexical or keyword type of uh, search using uh, bm25 method okay so that's why we don't need uh, a vector a data store or embedding model etc etc all right so the most important uh, function of this tool is this forward one uh, so every tool uh, within this uh, small agents framework should have this forward method so it takes the query uh, as an input uh, we are simply checking that it is actually a string and then we invoke our retriever okay so here we define the retriever we invoke the retriever and we get a bunch of documents back and then doing again a bit of process from those documents we are extracting the content of those documents and return this back to the agent so when the agent invoke this tool the tool does two things it reformulate the query and it does this uh, search uh, lexical search uh, process uh, the return documents uh, and return them as a string okay so here we instantiate our tool okay with the doc processed okay as you see here here we have uh, our documents uh, processed
So we simply supply our knowledge base. Uh, so when we invoke this the first time, uh, our retriever uh, gets uh, created. Now we are going to build the agent. Uh, we already have the tool. Uh, we need an LLM. Uh, as you know, there are already uh, several methods to access LLMs. We'll use Hugging Face API. And then we'll use uh, the code agent. Now, different frameworks, uh, for example, Crew AI, uh, Langgraph, etc., etc., they have different types of agents. So the code agent, React agent, uh, 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 or some other uh, different types of agent. Now, one difference is, in other frameworks, when we invoke the agent, it creates the plan in the form of this natural language. And then, those plan steps are converted to code when calling the tools. Whereas with the small agents, the plan itself is created as a code as opposed to this uh, the text, okay? Not super important, but the code agent has been shown to give better results as opposed to the agents which create their plan as a form of text uh, as opposed to the code, okay? Maybe we will dwell into that concept uh, uh, in some other video. So here uh, we are creating an agent. Uh, we simply supply the tools, uh, only one tool, custom tool, which we created here. And then an LLM model, uh, the max step setting it to two so that it don't go infinite loop uh, and take forever and consume uh, the tokens, the price, etc. Okay, so this is important. And the verbosity level, uh, that's just uh, to see the output. All right, so we have the agent. Now let's invoke the agent. So here we are asking a question, which is in the question format, as you can see, for a transformer model training, which is slower, the forward or backward pass. So we are simply asking for a transformer model training, uh, is the forward or backward pass uh, slower, okay? So we run the agent and uh, we print the agent output. Now, if you see, so we are using this deep seek reasoning model. So that's why uh, it is thinking, hey, so I need to do so and so forth, so forth. But here is the query. Now you will see the user query, which is in this question format is reformulated to this affirmative voice, uh, uh, which is how we have the documents or our uh, uh, knowledge basis, okay? So it's reformulated as forward versus backward pass computational time transformers, okay? So the question get reformulated into this affirmative voice. And then uh, the agent created this code as part of this plan, uh, which is simply uh, invoking the retriever, okay? Which is invoking the uh, retriever. And then uh, we'll have the final answer. Don't worry about those warning messages. Uh, but here we have uh, the final response. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all for this video. Uh, if you find uh, this content useful, uh, please uh, consider uh, like, subscribe, share and all those uh, good things. Thank you very much.